Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm Long time no see. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so I am in my accommodations. I hope you're comf- comfortable as well. I am. Um, and, well, we're going to, let's just wait a couple of seconds until some people join in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so and and just thank you in general for <laughs> uh for for allowing us to share your piece in the exhibition or Definitely. your two pieces in the exhibition thank you for having me yeah uh for the for <laughs> for those of you in the public that have been able to see the show at america society uh or those of you who haven't yet uh because the show is up until december 17th uh Avery's uh Avery contributed uh, two beautiful sculptures that we're going to talk about in a, in in a little bit uh two beautiful bronze sculptures that are uh oh she managed to make something very light very heavy <laughs> <laughs> uh so we'll talk a little bit about that her process you know her history um so i m- maybe you can just like dive in you know um sure you know I I know that you come from a from a family of of weavers. Um, your Shaman. piece also, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and so, and, and I think that that is so deeply uh, related to the the work in particular that I was first uh, drawn to when I visited the Bahamas in 2017. The first works that I saw uh, were your. Um, the, the straw bags, basket. Oh, yeah. the mm-hmm. straw, mm-hmm. yeah, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the baskets. Yeah. Uh, so from there to these like art more uh, like chest plate pieces, yeah. um, I've seen how um, you're approaching like that same heritage while also like obviously bringing <laughs> it your own, uh, you'll explain it better than yes. my grand, your own criticism, your own history. Um, yes. your own, you know, everything. So I just want to talk a little bit about your background, like mm-hmm. uh, study-wise, uh, how you, I, I'm always interested in how people like end up being artists. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, just like, you know, like I come from art history, became a curator, like I was always drawn to that. Uh, right. Once I decided that I wanted to be in the art history track. But how how was it for you? Um. So... Getting into art, I think I kind of was always an artist because obviously my mom's a straw vendor. My dad's a construction um, in the construction field, so he's a Finnish carpenter. So, um, so those two things have always been a part of my life, um, and so it just transpired more so when I after I had my first visit to the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. I think it opened its doors in two thousand and three, and I graduated from high school in two thousand and four. So. Um, connecting the dots between those two spaces kind of made me realize there's a space for art or a space for it to be seen. So that got me kind of right, right on the track to know, okay, this is definitely what I want to do. So, yeah, that's yeah, like, and, yeah, and, yeah, and geography, and, and like in terms of geography, it is downtown now. So it is mm-hmm. like this place that I think, I mean, you also worked at the National Gallery. So, like, right. you know that the people who work there and their mission is precisely to draw people that are in downtown. Exactly. Like, exactly. You are, you are the target. It's kind of <laughs> like, it's kind of like living between the lines of like kitsch and fine art because, you know, being in a straw market and, and getting these kitschy items for tourism and then being in fine arts that still kind of like engages culture. Um, and people to kind of look a little deeper into who the people are who's making the work. So it was kind of like living between those two spaces. Yeah, I, I think that it would be um, that it would be helpful to give a, a like describe that situation a little bit more, maybe in terms of geography, but also like what is the straw market? Okay, um, that's fine. Um, so the straw market is downtown Nassau on Bay Street. I think most island countries have a Bay Street. Um, so essentially it's close to the water. Um, but essentially the, the straw market itself has over 500 booths, so um, straw vendors inside that space, all selling um, anything from T-shirts to straw products um, and all of the things in between, like keychains and so forth. Um, so I grew up um, with my mom doing a bit of both. Um, So I had a lot of um, ambivalence as a child 
with the the interaction between the tourists and um, Bahamians because we um, we alter our voices and um, our accents so we can be more understandable so we're more palatable and um, so all of those things are kind of like as a child very like like grating on on me um, and I didn't really explain a lot of that to my mom she just knew I was the kid that didn't want to go <laughs> to be <laughs> in the straw market um, but. We, we did a lot of um, the work and, um, and would have to sell it to the, to, to the tourists. And I was kind of up the, up the whole inclination that if you want it, buy it. If you don't, I'm not doing the whole, you know, Coming what I'm saying? So yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so that was kind of like the whole thing of where my practice has come from, um, building on defining exactly how that feeling was and why I felt that way. So, um, it led me to understand how difficult or um, tedious the whole straw making process is. Um, so I had a different appreciation for it as I was making the work. But before I was kind of like, um, when I went to the University of Tampa, Kendra Ford was my professor and she said, you should make some work in straw. And I was like, never. <laughs> so I was totally against it. I was like, oh, I hate straw, I'll never do it. And I remember I um, did an artist talk in Aruba and um, I was telling them how I, like, I hated straw and I didn't want to do anything with it. And somebody was like, the way you treat the straw, you don't talk about it. It's not hate that you're doing. <laughs> and I was like, I, I understand that now. But before I was kind of like, I didn't, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. But eventually in my graduate um, program, um, they told me to create some things and bring some stuff back with me. And I think that actually in, encouraged me on the curatorial side of things, because um, when you're an artist and a curator, the two are not necessarily intertwined. You operate kind of differently on both scopes. But once they brought that part of it into it, I was able to say, you know what, I have to use the straw. So I brought... Um, it, like it is a coming to terms with, with, yeah. with, your, with your family, with what the Bahamas mm -hmm. can, rep can represent and in, exactly. in, in the imagination mm -hmm. of of so many tourists i think that that is why i mean at, at least for me in the um, uh it was definitely one of the like core pieces that i wanted to to bring into the exhibition because i think the visit to the bahamas was very um was very enlightening in in you know in the sense that you know similar to when i to to visit in jamaica like there are very like obvious things happening <laughs> right. and there is a and there is a and there is a performance and there are like geographical uh like separations or architectural separations that are very very uh, present in everyone's you know life and mm -hmm. the only way that sometimes people ignore them is because like you have to in in mm -hmm. uh in order to just like continue to live under those circumstances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and it's not that you ignore them it's like you you need to get past that in order to like achieve something else exactly and i think that in your work there is a coming to terms with that that i that i think is uh, is very important and in the placement of the work itself in the exhibition it is in this area that is in relation to like as we can see in the in the photograph to um gladys uh, gambi's work and uh, Joy Di Minaya's work. Um, so, yeah, like the, the <laughs> and obviously uh, Dion, uh, Dion Benjamin Smith, who was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I have no sense of time anymore, <laughs> but I think it was like a couple of weeks ago that we also had an in the studio with her. And so, of course, like those were very important pieces uh, in able to, to be able to represent this, uh, these, this kind of conflicting feelings, yeah, uh, yeah, and and our own, uh, what is like art's role in this, in, right, in, in, in and sometimes in its complicity in the case of Dion's work, and in your case, like kind of how you, uh, it. How, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. how you deal with it, how, how you yeah. like try to make sense of uh, of that because definitely. Um, that you know um that was the business that made it possible for you Me to too. achieve what you have achieved exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah so yeah <laughs> um so um 
I just wanted to ask a little bit more about like some of your references, like artistic references or people that mm -hmm. have been important in your um, in your formation even. Um, you mentioned so, Kendra and, and, and yes. I also wanted to uh, just like uh, give a preview, like Avria is also um, a curator. She's a gallery manager as well. She's a you know cultural worker in general. Um, so on one of the recent exhibitions that you curated was uh, it was a retrospective of yes, Kendra's was. work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, Kendra and I, we our relationship started as a student and professor relationship, um, and. I had a whole bunch of Bahamians telling me, oh, you're in the art program and you don't know there's a Bahamian art professor here. So anyway, so we, we kind of met late in my um, bachelor's program um, and she was really upset. She was like, you should have been here from like day one. <laughs> but, um, but we formed a really good relationship that lasted past um, my, me graduating from the University of Tampa. And I've been invited a few times back to UT to do some bronze work. So I'm really grateful for the relationship I have with her and the university. Um, but essentially, I've been following her practice because I was at the National Archive of the Bahamas and as assistant curator there. So, um, so I'm very much aware of like what the practice was when I was at school because her studio was our studio. So she worked um, in the studio there. And so I could see it from behind the scenes and actually see it when it got to the gallery and we installed it. So I had done quite a bit of um, national exhibitions showing her work, so bringing them in to installing it and so forth. And so uh, Amanda Colson was the director at the National Guide of the Bahamas and she um, was asking around a lot, asking, hey, who should we have curate Kendra's um, survey exhibition? And um, Jody Minnis actually said, it needs to be Avria. And so they asked me if I would be interested. And I was like, more than interested because um, to, to be a curator on the national level is something that, um, you know, it's kind of like once in a lifetime. And I was like, I definitely do it. And not only because I want that opportunity, but because it's Kendra for, you know what I mean? And she is definitely my mentor. She's somebody I look up to in the community, like as a sculptor, a Bahamian sculptor, it's kind of like, it's unseen for a woman to get that kind of recognition. She is definitely the first one to have a retrospective in the National Gallery of the Bahamas and to have me do it as my first like real um, solo <laughs> curatorial job was kind of like, yeah, it's very overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do remember getting some materials um, about like great Bahamian artists and they're all men. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so kudos for that I mean, thank you it, yeah yeah just like an update an update please right <laughs> so um is that um was that when you first started experimenting and working with bronze or was that like, at the later university on? of tampa yeah oh, so okay. i started working in bronze at the university of tampa and um, so so yeah that really um encouraged me when i went to do my graduate degree in sculpture and expanded practice and they had a foundry and and you're in the grad program, it's all led by you. And so I just like had the opportunity in one of the classes, like they had a, they had a, um, a bronze class, um, it was like a foundry class. And I basically bribed all my friends to come and work for me. And that's how we ended up with the terms of perfection um, piece, which was the straw baskets. And so we all worked really, really hard. And um, of course, I gave them pizza and beer <laughs> and <laughs> gifts from home. Um, but it was a, it was a, a mammoth task. Um, it, one thing about a, a foundry or a bronze pour is it's definitely a team effort. And, and I think that's what I like most about a sculpture or a sculpture practice. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So the these pieces, the, what I forget the title now, is that perfection, right? <laughs> Sure, some perfection. That's this one here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why? <laughs> what, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, I can. So I, can, I know you could kind of guess what why. Yeah, but I'll, but like, I'll give you guys was, the whole the, spiel. What was the process, and why, and, and why this um, this object in particular? So, um, I always being in the straw market at the time. I, I, at the time, I think in that same within that period, I think it was 2016. There was a whole lot of raving about people learning to make more straw products because they want to be more authentic. And people hate when I use this inside my practice, but I love to use it. <laughs> but um, authenticity and talking about 
what is real about um, being Bahamian, what is culturally um, a product of, of being Bahamian. And the straw um, practices, they were saying, oh, everybody should come and come do some straw work. And everybody was doing these bags that were like clutches and like really high end looking, like where you can insert leather and fur and make it kind of like as much Louis Vuitton or Chanel kind of bag as you can. And what was interesting is if you walked in a straw market, those boots that had those um, bags, they were stacked. Like they had them, but tourists weren't buying them. Because they wanted because, something cheap. Uh, no, 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 not even the cheapness. It's more so about they associate island living oh, with right, right, this right, right. very primitive looking bag. It, it, the, the high end thing is, oh, I'm going to go to Marc Jacobs or whoever else for something that's made of straw. It said looks like that. But they're looking for the big beach bag that looks like, you know what I mean? And you can carry it to the beach or carry it to grocery store or whatever the case may be. That's what that's traditionally what a Bahamian straw bag should look like. So for me, it was kind of like everybody's like breaking their back to make these bags, but this is the, the bag that's actually selling us these baskets. And um, I was off to school and I decided I'm going to make this basket. I've never made it before. And I was like, I'm going to make it. And I made one. And we did a test of it. And I was like, this is pretty interesting, you know, to, because it's a burnout process. So I'm going to give you an idea of what the foundry is like. Um, yeah, please. I so I made the product. <laughs> more about the techniques. No problem. So I made the product, um, the straw bag out of, um, made the straw bag, and I carried it to um, the foundry. So we are going to invest it. And an investment basically means you're going to um, put it into uh, a capsule that um, you're going to pour plaster, silica sand, water, basically a mixture to make it kind of um, almost like a, um, a mold of the thing, right? And so it's like a, a plumbing system that goes to the object. And then you flip this thing upside down into a kiln. They burn out everything from that investment. And then we're going to replace that empty space with the bronze. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how you get the positive of what, the, what was left out of the investment. So I did this. And interesting about the straw is that it's very thin and it's very light. And so I had to coat it with wax in order for it to give it the thickness, in order for it to register in the investment because if it's too thin it the bronze won't be able to reach into the, the investment to get to it so i did it as the first time just to try it out and see what would happen and it came out really interesting even though it didn't come out fully i think this is the one to the very top in the middle that was the first one i did so um it it didn't come out perfect but it's it was a, it was an amazing exactly but it was an interesting um object and I was like this is interesting and I would work on it because I had to cut off all the plumbing system that was on it and kind of like um so if some of them I soaked in like coca-cola and all this other stuff so anyway I would carry it from one studio to the next studio and I would walk with it on my shoulder like a bag and everybody would just stop and like stare and so I was like this object has a lot more power than I'm thinking <laughs> you know what I mean so I just did it once and I was like I have to do this over again so um, the whole idea behind tourism perfection is in the Bahamas, we consider ourselves, um, you know, you have the slogan, it's better in the Bahamas. And, if, you know, of course, they, we're, we're number one in the Caribbean, not really, but okay. Um, but yeah, so that's that whole idea that um, when you come here, it's supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be the sublime and you come to get away and all this other stuff. And, you know, you have uh, a drink in your hand, all these other ideas of being on the beach and being away from all of these other things comes to the idea of a perfect place to get away, right? And so the whole process of making this bag, and I reiterated it um, eight, eight more times, and I still didn't get a perfect bag. Now, can I get a perfect bag from the bronze making process? Yeah, sure, but what's the, what's the beauty or the joy in that? Um, so it's kind of like a, a comparison between what the Bahamas kind of like represents or trying to present to the world that we're perfect and... Um, um, and tourism is supposed to create this perfection, but it has a lot of flaws. And I like, I think that the flaws are the things that I'm pointing out mostly with the idea of these bags. Yeah, actually, um, something that we have discussed and, and we talked about in the, in the last in-person talk uh, that we had here in New York was specifically about how, like, there is this certain feeling of, um, 
like this imagery that becomes oppressive and um and that a lot of the islands are trying to copy the mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and even if it sometimes it even transcends the caribbean because we could be looking towards uh the pacific with the valley beds right you know right uh, <laughs> and it's like what is really what is this a bed in the on, on the beach uh, right <laughs> but the whole the whole thing about stealing sand um like There are um, what else the the, the little pigs, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little pigs that you know that yes. are not great for the environment either. No, you know, no. so there is this sense that there is there are certain images that are being created to be consumed, but they are um, they're also part of what is destroying mm -hmm. the actual natural environment. Exactly, <laughs> very much. That is that is supposed to be what you are attracted to. That is supposed to be that like beautiful natural space. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, that is. Uh, I think that amongst the, the Caribbean islands, it feels like the Bahamas is like this representation of perfection that feels oppressive to the rest of the Caribbean. Exactly. It's like the water is so clear, the sand is so, you know, the people are so, so friendly, so white yes. or so pink or whatever mm -hmm. that it just feels like, wow, like but we need to steal that sand. And that mm -hmm. is literally what happens. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we so, sell our sand like, what, two cents per ton or something like that. Really, really cheap. And then when you buy it from the store here, it's like three dollars a bag, and the bag is like this big. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's crazy. It's oppressive yeah. to the people who live here, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, going going back to the piece in the exhibition, um, how did you arrive at the at, at um, the form? So, or did you keep experimented with with other I, uh, so shapes I, I had, or products? No, I. So I had intended to do a full straw armor suit. So it was never really supposed to be bronze. It was just supposed to be a full straw armor suit that I was going to make. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I remember make, wanting to make it because I was like, this idea, or I, I started a piece called Straw Cocoon and I had wrapped myself in a straw and I was sewing my body into it. Um, you'll see a little, 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 a little later in the slideshow, but essentially... I did a performance. It was just me and a friend. Um, and I had her ink me and I did a monoprint of me in this full suit straw cocoon. And so I got super emotional when I did this performance. It was just me and her in the room. She took some photos of us doing this. And so it's not the best to present, but um, the experience itself led me to think of like different things that I wanted to do with the straw. And I was kind of like, I, I, I was bombarded by these feelings of like, I'm being smothered by this straw. I can't breathe. I want to get out of it. And so it kind of like played into the work that I wanted to make. And I was like, this is exactly how I feel about it. And it's kind of like revealing to me that the, um, the straw is supposed to be kind of like an armor. And I'm like, like, like my parents or my, my heritage is kind of like gifting it to me. Um, but it feels oppressive and it feels weighty and it feels heavy. Like I should be protecting it or, you know, passing it down to the next generation and all of that. And so the whole idea of an armor is it's supposed to protect you. And the weight of it would cause you to basically crumble to your feet. <laughs> you know, it really can't protect you because um, straw is penetrable. So it's, it's not going to stop a knife or whatever from coming, some projectile from coming at you. Um, so it's the same way I kind of looked at um, COVID happened and it was kind of like, this is my thesis. <laughs> and it's like, like tourism won't save you you know what i mean um the whole island was shut down we could make no money and it's like how do you protect the people who live here without this industry so the whole idea that tourism or straw is supposed to protect me is not real so this idea of me making the cocoon and then leading to me talking about or thinking about armor and protection was was the the, the, the thread i was working from okay um it what you said about like tourism is not going to save us that also reminds me of um when irma first hit the 
you know, the rest of the Caribbean. It, it affected Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, but only part part of it. Um, of course, we were left without electricity for a while because that mm -hmm. happens often. Uh, but but it wasn't as devastating as for mm -hmm. other islands. And the um, the government at the time, the administration that was in 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 place, and then later kicked out. Um, they really were trying to push they were even um like trying to come up with a vacation plans for the people who were who had been left stranded on like who missed out on their vacation mm -hmm. because of the hurricane yep. so like the puerto rican government was like tr trying to like swoop in like. and <laughs> and and try to like open up they they probably thought like wow now we can have like french tourists or mm -hmm. something um and not just cater to the americans but yeah it was uh, like, obviously like literally two weeks later Maria work from hit, home from the bahamas <laughs> is, is that also yeah is that, that also, was a thing uh, no that was a thing that was a huge thing yeah <laughs> yeah i think that we're similar it's like mm -hmm. there is this thread from uh plantation economies to the to the to the institution so, of the hotels neo colonial <laughs> yeah and yeah. and whenever and um, whenever tourism and like tourism is is not often not necessarily the the number one uh, industry industry mm -hmm. not in every island but mm -hmm. it, but i think that it always has an an outsized presence and an outsized importance mm -hmm. um, because it becomes an issue of like having to like how people are educated, how people are talk to, right. to the visitors. Um, and I was actually like pretty shocked that in the Bahamas, there is a, a program that you have to go through and able to like, to be able to work in the, in the industry as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so, uh, this, is host, the blue this is this is part of the blue light special right? yes this is a, an elevating the blue light special um this talks di directly to kind of like the point of sale between um the the, the guest or the tourist and um the straw vendor um so everybody kind of says similar things like hi how can i help you da, 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 whatever when you come to the straw market but to get tourist um attention sometimes you have to kind of like go from the go diff from a different route so most of our, our guests are definitely north american so either from canada or from america and um walmart not walmart kmart used to have this tagline called the blue light special and so it was a huge thing if you wanted to get like a large group's attention you would say hi i've got the blue light special and they were like spin around and they were like okay you know what's the deal exactly they were they, were, they came back to you immediately right um um so it was just a moment of kind of like meeting them where their level is or what they're <laughs> expecting no it is it is though i'm sorry it's just what it is so yeah um, like you're recognizing so, who the country has um like has marketed itself to right like, exactly so so that tagline was always so funny to me as a child. And I was like, I, I, I needed to name it this piece because I, um, this one here is Raffia and Burlap. And Raffia is a big part of the straw products that we make. Um, that's what you embroider the product with. And so I used this. So this entire body of work was um, this piece. It was another one with fabrics that I would be lining the bags with. And then, so it was like a tapestry piece that I hung on the wall as well. And then the, the two armor pieces were a part of that as well. So it was, all of this is tied into this um, elevating the blue light special. Um, just kind of like putting um, these objects or the materiality on the wall in a gallery to me was kind of, I, I, I work from a place of humor <laughs> a lot. And I think that for me was very interesting or very funny. So that's why um, I named those pieces that. <laughs> And my and mom we, particularly says with these pieces, she with, with um, Raffia, she says, little girls like pink and purple. And that's why everything should be pink and purple because you will, you, they won't sell. So I intentionally use other colors that, that aren't pink and purple um, because of it. But yeah. 
Um, how has um, like your your well maybe your mom, but other people how have they reacted to the work and to the criticality that is in you know imbued um, in the work? I I think I'm still trying to see what their reaction is. Um, I haven't had anybody specifically come to me. I'm pretty sure they had conversations amongst themselves, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> As people I haven't do. had anybody um, literally say to me like um, at least not within my family um, say well this is how I feel about it or whatever but um, other people who have had other family members that are in the store industry have been like they come up to me and say this reminds me of working with my mom or doing this on Saturdays with my grandma or whatever so that's been um very interesting um so i always want to know no. yeah yeah uh -huh. so yeah so that's been really interesting um to hear from other people kind of like from that 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 aspect of it but not from the criticality of like tourism position no maybe it's uh well i don't know i think that I, with the artists that i have engaged with and the and other i have engaged with in the bahamas mm -hmm. like definitely that you know, that critical aspect is always present because like, it's, it's, it's also my angle. It's like, it's my interest, mm -hmm. but I think that they are very much aware of it. Um, I don't know if that is like something very prevalent or, or it's more of a taboo subject or like people just like, assume that this is life. Like, let's well, just I get on with it. Uh -huh. I mean, the first thing people say when you start to talk about tourism, you start to talk about being critical of it is um oh that's super negative why would you look at it from that point of view this is what's really sustaining us why would you kind of like try to batten down the industry that's doing us so well da, 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 da. And that's normally the case i just did a talk the other day um and and this lady was going off on us because she was like oh you guys are looking at everything so negatively and and, and i feel kind of bad da, 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 da. and there's people who would like to help and want to do stuff if you just go on like talk shows and do this i'm like we do a talk show almost every week. I like, get somebody on a, on a talk show. I promise you every week. And she, she totally didn't understand. Like, yeah, we work with this person. Yeah, we work with this. Da, 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 da. We understand that. But the, the whole idea is for everyone to be involved in the conversation. You know? So if, if you're missing it, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so you can hear this. But yeah. So, so that's normally the angle people come from. They're like kind of upset. But, but I mean, you got to shake some tables sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if art doesn't do that, then you know what? Like, well. What is it for? Right. Um, one of the one of the reasons why I wanted to go initially to NASA was to see this exhibition that was based on, um, curated by Ricardo Barrett and mm -hmm. Natalie Willis, that um, was reflecting on Krista Thompson's uh, oh, "A Night yes. for the Tropics," mm -hmm. and that is such a like. I, I'm such an admirer of her <laughs> and um, uh, that book is so uh, so key to a lot of this thinking and mm -hmm. that and that exhibition was really important because it like it, it just um, it's a look at um, how like different different kinds of collections in the Bahamas the mm -hmm. national uh, whether it's the bank or or the National Art Gallery or the or like, Diagla Art or Foundation. private yeah or yeah. private collections, mm -hmm. Don Davis, the Aguilar mm -hmm. Foundation. Like how their selection of works also speaks to uh, a certain gaze through the years mm -hmm. and and how collecting practices also are you know are, are an shifting. example I mean, yeah. of this. And sh and shifting and like mm -hmm. and and the artists go from being, you know, like traveler, uh, traveling painters to mm -hmm. Bahamians reflecting on how you got, you are seen. Yeah. And uh, how you can like, revert the gaze. Exactly. Uh, maybe we can go to another, to another work. No problem. Um, yes. I haven't <laughs> seen this, so <laughs> this is kind of like new to me. New? Tell, tell yeah. me about it. These are pretty new. Um, I did a show with Rashado Barrett at The Current in May. Um, and these pieces were shown. This one, to, to, uh, I guess my left. It should be left everybody, but yeah. It's called um, Patron Saint of Straw. Um, so I did these bronze faces of my mom and my two aunts who are straw vendors. And uh, One passed recently, um, the one to your right. Um, that's called Royal Jelly Marie. 
And so I did these molds um, during um, 2020. So I think during COVID, uh, I did these molds of their faces. I had wanted to do it for a minute, but I figured this was the time to do it because another aunt had passed a year before and I was like, I can't wait any longer, so I have to do mm-hmm. it. Um, but so like I said before, like doing the work and um, addressing my criticality of tourism and my ambivalence with the industry um, led me to realize how um, important they were to, to, for me to get to where I am. Um, and so this body of work um, essentially is like an homage to them. And so th- this one's called Patron Scene of Straw. My aunt was, um, she owned a store called Straw Mart. And um, so it was a couple, of the, a couple of blocks down from the straw market. And she would sell wholesale items and straw vendors, not straw vendors, straw platters from the family islands who come and drop their, their plat to her store. And she can sell it for them and they come back and pick up their money. Um, but essentially... I call it a patriot seat of straw because we're, we're actually Anglican. So I was definitely um, playing with the irreverence of it all um, with that one. Um, but yeah, it's just like strap fabrics for my um, work pom poms. So this these piece are, is that. These, these are also, um, sorry, these, these fabrics are also made in the family islands? No, these fabrics no. are definitely, um, some are Indian. And one is from the Baham, the, the, um, Bahama handprints and let me see, let's see what the other ones and the other one comes from like a fabric store here and I think they had something made maybe in China or something that represents the Bahamas so still still putting a tongue in cheek kind of like um, um nod to kind of like authenticity and the idea that essentially we're on an island and a lot of what we have here we do not manufacture um mm-hmm. and so so that that was that one, and then the the one on the right, same same type of material, and um straw. So my mom's like, "Oh, you're using all my straw," and I try to use as much scraps as I possibly can, so I don't have to over anything. But we share a studio, so it's it's like it's a quid pro quo, and like, what can I do to get this? <laughs> and I need this or whatever. But it's fun to work with family. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you said this was during uh, lockdown. What did you jot down? I mean, did, was it really, really like shut down? Nothing happening. So, were you able to lockdown um, change to make to make more work, or did you just like um, oh, were able so to <laughs> so this to jot first down one. the ideas for the future? <laughs> okay, so the first, so I had these ideas like written down and ready to go, um, but. What happened with the first one was Patriots in a Straw. That was curated by Natalie Willis into Floating Rib. It was an all-women exhibition at the National Gallery of the Bahamas. So I kind of had to make it happen. I was like, she asked me to be in this exhibition. I'm going to make it happen. So that happened, I think, the beginning of 2021. And interestingly enough, I actually made it of ceramic. Um, the, the, the bus was actually, not the bus, the, the face, um, face mask was actually made of ceramics for the exhibition intended to have it done with bronze because I was supposed to go back to Tampa and do all the bronze pieces. And obviously that couldn't happen because travel was not happening um, um, or very limited and you needed all kind of stuff to travel. Um, so I did it with um, a ceramic face and um, did it with Jessica Colebrook, and, um, another artist here. She was very gracious and she allowed me to work with her and got that done. Um, but yeah, that showed in floating rib. So that was the kind of like the first one that led to the rest of the works being made. Um, so the other ones are all shown together at the current. I think I did a total of five of them. One with oh, the wow. th- yeah, so one with the three faces with my mom and my two aunts, and one for each um, each person. So my mom and my two aunts, each individual, and then I did one of myself. Um, and that one's called Great Expectations. <laughs> because they expect you to continue the tradition. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we can go to another slide. I don't know if you've included some of these images, some of the other work. Oh, this is the cocoon. Yes, this is the straw cocoon. This one started, like I said, uh, I never shown the piece before. It was, was just supposed to be like a performance um, that I did. But we, that any 
um, the 10th any um, national exhibition, sorry, the National Guide of Bahamas just happened um, in September. I don't know. I don't know what month it is. <laughs> I, think so, I think September. Anyway, so John Cox created this show called Mercy. Um, I think it has 51 artists. Um, and essentially the theme behind, um, the idea behind the theme is how do we as um, artists or Bahamians show mercy and it could relate to however you understand mercy to be and so forth. But for me, this piece was more so about mercy to the material and I guess to the industry itself. And so the whole story of me sewing myself into the piece and um, getting super emotional kind of talks about the industry and as people, um, how we kind of like are stereotyped, stereotyped to the space that we're in and we kind of, we're, we're at the mercy of, of the industry. And, um, you know, so, so that is, it's a very heavy piece, but it's, it's different from my other ones that are a little bit more lighter, but yeah, so that's what that is tied to. Yeah. And it's called no. the ambiguity of the straw cocoon. <laughs> um, it's, it's very revealing that you chose the cocoon and then kind of, um, but then there is, and that it, it is a catalyst for your work to change in a way and for your approach to the material to also change. It's very, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very symbolic. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. You, you have done, this wasn't the only performance that you've done. No, no, uh, this isn't. No, no, no. Uh, there was I don't know. Bay of River, I remember. Oh, yes, you saw lake. that one. Okay, oh. you saw that one. Okay, that was at, at Hillside House. Okay, I think. It was just, okay, so that one was called, um, I think it was called Beach, if I remember. Um, but I did this for my thesis. I, I went to places that, um, so the first one was done in Ohio. So that's where I was going to school. And my friends had invited me to a birthday party. And they said, Oh, we're gonna go at the beach and and you know have celebrate a birthday. I, a I don't know I'm in the middle of freaking Ohio, but in my mind, I hear beach. I was excited. I was nostalgic. I'm like, yeah, we're going to the beach. I went, got my bed soon, got everything ready, and I went there. And I was like, what is this? I'm still looking for the beach. It was um, <laughs> a lake. Like a meme. It was yeah, a, it's lake. Like a meme. It's like a meme. It's like <laughs> I didn't know. It's a sign, literally, Marina. It said beach. The sign said beach. I was so disappointed. And they were like, are you not going to come in the water? And I was like, what? what? That's gross. So they like, they hyped me up. And I was like, you know what? I'll go in the water. And they went in the water. <laughs> and I was like, this is, I laughed the entire time I was in the water. I said, if my family sees me, if anybody sees me in this water right now. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, and I was like, I have to come back. So I did a performance where um I like wearing this white dress and I'm walking into this um water and then I I'm, I'm carrying a straw bag and it's I'm like filled it with sand and I carry it because it's all made with like man-made sand like a beach entrance <laughs> you know oh my God. yes exactly so I walked in it with this bag of sand a straw bag of sand I walked in and I left the straw bag inside the water and I came back out again um <laughs> but Everybody, every Bahamian who was watching was like, you really went in that water? Are you okay? <laughs> um, so it was pretty funny to me. Um, but when I did the second, I did it one time when it's a test. Then the next time I did it, it was super cold. It was like in the 60s. And then I was like, oh, I want to do this a couple more times. I don't know what I was thinking. But <laughs> I want to do this a couple more times. I went to um, Virginia because my, um, my uncle lives in Virginia. And so it was this kind of idea of me leaving something, um, kind of this idea of migration or living somewhere abroad and um, kind of embedding yourself in the culture there or kind of like either watering yourself down or changing to be in that space. And, and then also the bag leaving behind is kind of symbolic of like, it's a part of you or something I made. So yeah, I left those bags of sands. <laughs> they probably still in that water. <laughs> but <laughs> once in Virginia, and I was supposed to do another one in um, Detroit because I have a cousin that lives in Detroit as well. But yeah, so I, I don't know. I I might do it again. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It was like an, an ongoing, you know, ongoing performance uh, with yeah. the Canadian diaspora. Yeah. The US. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um. When you, I. I guess this is this is something that I also contend with, like 
returning home after being abroad for you know for some years like how um it 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 often changes it shifts how you see uh the the place that you left how mm -hmm. you know, and and you need to f to find yourself again and find like what um what you can do there that still Uh, that, that yeah, still addresses to you. That, that that's that connects to the person that you have become mm -hmm. um what 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 does that mean for you in terms of going forward with your with your work um whether it's at the current or you know as an mm -hmm. artist curator mm -hmm. like what what do you want to do and what do you feel like that what do you feel that connects to uh, to, to stay in the bahamas as well because i think that is also a choice Yeah, when you when you stay in Puerto Rico, when you stay in the Bahamas, wherever you know, because mm -hmm. of course there is this there there is this drive also in a lot of uh, Caribbean countries to leave. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then I was actually looking at um, staying in Ohio, um, but for me culturally, Ohio was very difficult to live in. I just feel like it, it is what it is. Like, obviously, you go to New York, you go to Miami, you could find your people and, and, you know, find a way to make that feel like home. But Ohio was super difficult. Um, not that I didn't have um, traction and, and I could meet people and because um, of Columbus, I was looking at some galleries there and stuff. Um, but definitely coming home was a choice. <laughs> um, so for me, as an artist, I want to continue to practice. I hope to take Um, I hope my daughter's not on this call. I'll leave of absence to go to back to Tampa to do some more bronze work. <laughs> um, but that's what I want to do um, because I feel like the bronze kind of informs the rest of my practice. Um, and, and I realized that being at Basel um, this past week, um, that I need to shift that a little bit because that's a little too like material focused and I'm definitely not that person. Um, so... I will plan on working on other materials, but essentially, <laughs> hi, Jody. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but essentially, the idea is that I will be able to focus on my practice a little bit more because um, I do have a lot of things that are on my, in my sketchbook ready to go. Um, so curatorially, I'm kind of open to anything. Um, I hope me and Jody could work on another project together. <laughs> Um, so that's that will be exciting. That's that's something we're hoping to do together. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I, just I think that I, I think that for a lot of um, artists who are women, mm -hmm. there is this issue with like we're also great administrators, uh, curators, administrators, we, we, we yeah. make things happen, and it's not that the that the work is in the back burner it's not that it's just that sometimes you need that incentive of the invitation and mm -hmm. and it's about like how you can keep yourself putting like how do you keep putting yourself in a situation where you keep getting invited or mm -hmm. that you can take time right to just dedicate it to to your work right. so i'm looking forward to to that area what what did you say that you didn't want to be like focused on the material because so, it was like to the like you feel that it was too dependent on the bronze or what? not dependent but i feel like everybody's kind of like ex so for example the piece that i the struggle cone piece uh, everybody's like oh what's the bronze piece you're gonna be doing and i'm like it's not a bronze piece i feel like i'm disappointing people that I, i mean like not necessarily that i want to find it to anybody but essentially it was like It's not. And then after it was kind of like, I, I got pushed. They were like, you need to do it, still do it. And I was like, I'm going to make it happen. And I did this piece. And I feel like this allowed me to tap into what I needed to do still. Like it, it, it didn't have to be bronze. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was waiting for, to do the bronze work in order for me to complete the rest of the work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I'm saying that I'm, I, that was something that I kind of like realized when I was away and I could shift what that is and how I practice now. So it's like, I can do all of these other things. And then whenever the bronze happens, it happens. But you know what I mean? Because uh, we yes. have a, we have a foundry here, but it's an abaco. So it's still a trip. You know what I mean? But um, <laughs> it's still, like literally it's, it's not another natural. island. Exactly. So yeah, um, I know. Yeah. 
So hopefully something happens and um, I work on what I can work on right now and then eventually the other stuff will fall in place. Yeah. Um, this is actually where we met. In yes. Cuba. We don't have a lot of time, but, I, but I think that this performance was so tongue in cheek and, <laughs> and so hilarious. I mean, and we have to understand the context as well. Like Aruba is like 80, 80% of Aruba's economy is tourism. tourism. Just like um, the Bahamas. Yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously like something connected there. <laughs> you also continued the work in, uh, in Nassau. In Nassau with Jody. Right? Yes, Jody photographed these um, pieces that you're seeing right now. So yeah. Um, so yeah, Aruba, like, the, the whole thing that, that started me to do this performance was because we were listening to the radio show and um, it was supposed to be a part of, I can't remember, what, was it a part of our, our, I think it was a part of our, our being there for Caribbean Linked and this lady was talking and um, she was saying how this lady, this Haitian lady is in the market and she's making these authentic Bahamian, authentic Aruban things. And I was like, that's so strange. And she was like, she's, these are amazing. You need to see them. And I was like, this Haitian lady is making authentic Aruban things in your market. And I was like, this is crazy. You know what I mean? And so I was like, so what, what does authentic mean to any, any of us? You know? So, um, I really wanted to go and see that <laughs> that woman's booth. I really did. But anyway, um, I was like, so I'm going to um, do this. So I had actually had this. Like my mom was saying I was going to make a full armor piece out of straw. So I had these pieces. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make my, my, turn myself into a straw doll. And so that's why I was like, I'm going to use this um, as a part of the piece. And I was wearing an androgia body, uh, androgia body, body suit. And essentially... I turn myself into like the two spaces because it's kind of like um, you have to help me with the two spaces now, Marina. So that was um, that downtown Aruba, and then uh, right next to it was um, where where like stick thing thing was. What what is it called? I have no idea. Oh man, I don't remember. But anyway, <laughs> right next to it was kind of like where people were living and um and, and then you would see downtown where it was kind of like all cleaned up and beautiful and, oh. you know what i mean and um um rancho what was it i almost had it anyway Don't so i was like this is like an interesting idea of where the people who make the product are and then the place where it's sold and and like there's such a stratification of what the space looks like and how it's treated and and so forth so i had to have those two um contrasts but it's, in it's, the piece. it's very similar to like downtown nassau exactly so so i think that's kind of why the whole idea behind caribbean link was kind of like we're all very very we have similar backgrounds and similar so all of these things that are kind of similar and we could point out kind of the differences but it that was what sticked out to me it was very similar to how Downtown Nassau is so close to Baintown and Grandstown, and it's like there's still outdoor um, outdoor toilets. There's still people have to go to the pump for water. You know what I mean? Um, not that they can't do the infrastructure. It's just that downtown is more important. That's where the tourists are coming. This is this is where we're on like center stage, and so that part of it was very um, interesting to me. Mm. Um, and I also love that in the previous photo, you're with, um, you're like exhausted. Uh, and yeah, it's the... not, not in that one. That <laughs> no, one is it's, a, it's the one before the that. First one. You're like exhausted right. and it says your, your country name here. Yes. Because precisely. It's like, there's this, um, sense of, um, easy interchangeability of, you know, whatever Island for mm -hmm. those who, vi for those who visit, it's like, it's a place with a beach where I'm being catered to and I am the, you know, the, the most right. important person. Right. <laughs> Everybody and else I'm, just lives over the hill. And then I'm discarded in the next area, which is like literally like what? 500 feet away. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Um, yeah. Because this, this thing doesn't have any kind of like agency here, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I want to leave some, some time. I mean, we have like, four minutes left um 
in case anybody has a question, question. <laughs> anybody has any comments. Um, and while people type, if they want to type something up, um, Avria, um, I don't know, you can tell us if there are any, uh, I mean, of course, we have the we have the show up until December 17. Uh, tomorrow, there's an in person um, talk. talk. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be in conversation with Ilaria Conti at 630 uh, at American Society. That's uh, Park 680 in New York City. <laughs> if, you, if anybody happens to be in, in New York, please join us. And Avria, um, any plans? Any like, what's wow. what, what, what's up? Like anything in in the notebook that you want to tell us about that you can tell us about? <laughs> um, no, I don't. Not not immediately. Um, only one thing today is the last day of a show that I'm in. The same patron saint of straw is actually in a show in Bangladesh. It's the Asian Art Biennale. Oh, um, nice. So if anybody's in Bangladesh, please go and see it. <laughs> but um, no, but that's but, fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that um, I'll, I mean, something that I'm definitely gonna speak to speak about tomorrow is how this research can grow, and I think that definitely, uh, like it can grow horizontally, like mm -hmm. across the tropics, and I think that um, that other parts of Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, are definitely uh, very, and I mean, it, it's just like we are. We're living with the remnants of colonialism and the then like the present form of colonialism or neocolonialism. Mm -hmm. uh, so any other colonized place would be able like, to relate to the work, in, yeah, <laughs> in a way. You know, that's so funny you said that because when I was in um, grad school. Um, of course, I was the only black girl, and and they were like, "Oh, but who like who's gonna be who's gonna see this work and who you want to see this work?" And I was kind of like, "Oh, you're making work about the Bahamas. How are we gonna relate to that?" And I was like, "Really? Wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I must encourage anybody who's gonna go to grad school go somewhere that they'll challenge you because you will see the work improve so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone is uh, Jamie Maria. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she's saying, I love how you name the works about the material art markets get very impressed by bronze. Mm -hmm. uh, and she also adds, I like the connection of it with colonizers busts. Mm -hmm. And that is That's exactly a great comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and there was a kind of uh, infamous <laughs> attack on the on the Christopher Columbus uh, statue in downtown mm -hmm. Nassau recently. Mm -hmm. So that's also um, that's also something that maybe you can like. They just finally removed it. They just they removed it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna decide what they're gonna do with it, whatever that means. Well, hopefully, <laughs> not maybe they give me give me a contract to put something there. <laughs> they can. Yeah. I mean. Um, they can melt melt it. <laughs> it's not it's not bronze though. Oh it's my like, god! I think it's like limestone or concrete or something. <laughs> mm, cheap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> Aria, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I I look forward to seeing you again somewhere. Of course. Miami, we go. Uh, the show uh, closes here in New York, December seventeen but it will travel to Puerto Rico. So we'll have another opportunity to re-engage with the works, uh, to get the word out there about um, this amazing group of 19 artists that are part of the exhibition. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you much for, for joining us today. Thank and you. This, yeah, thank you. Um, and the, <laughs> the live will be available on the um, America Society Instagram and webpage. So thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Bye, Bye Rina. <laughs>